Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and well, we have a very interesting video for you, and I'm gonna explain and I, I'm gonna explain the setup. I'm gonna pl- explain the setup. So, a while back, one of our listeners wanted to contribute to the podcasts and they wanted to co uh they wanted to talk about or they wanted to review uh MLP season 10 episode 1 to 4 with us but due to scheduling shenanigans um we miss almost everything so not wanting to bow out he decided to well kind of do a write-up for us and i read through everything and it's really interesting i i I like the i like what he has to say and you know what it's been a long while coming so what i'm going to do for uh, (laughs) what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to read a bit of what he wrote for us and i'm going to link everything into the uh, show notes so you can read it on your own all right uh so let's hop right into it <coughs> so this is jft's review for my little pony season 10 episode one two four. Oh man the, <laughs> the episode thing is kind of strange because it's a comic book but they call it episode so i'm just going to roll with it right <coughs> so this is what he wrote I wonder if that's clear enough. Hmm. I hope it is. Hmm. But you know, I'm I'm going to enlarge things a bit. You know, just so that it helps me with my eyes and helps you with the reading. All right, cool. <coughs> so he wrote, as far as first impressions goes on season ten, I cannot take them into account. Truth is, I'm a retired brony. I started watching the series at far back. uh, Where was I? Okay, at far back as season two, and one uh, and watched it all the way to middle of season five, when I suddenly fell out of it for some reason, and I'm kind of glad I did. So I could focus fully on writing my own story for a comic series. So for five years, I've been out of touch with the fandom. But then the pandemic outbreak happened and being bored, I decided to take a peek at what I've been, uh, sorry, uh, a peek at what's been happening on Equestria Daily. That's where I spotted that the final issue for of Zakura's arc was released and I suddenly felt a nostalgia rush. Nostalgia, okay. Uh, since she was one of my favorite characters. So I decided to check things out. At first, I liked it, but that was just a doping, dopamine feeling. After I calmed down, I thought to myself, there's a lot of things that felt out of place. I simply didn't have the context for the entire uh, the entry f- of the series of what happened to Zakura there. So I decided to go back where I left off and resume to watch the series to the end. And I remember the reason I couldn't originally finish the episode where I dropped it was because of expectation and dread that it was going to be a preachy episode but it turned out to be downright funny on top of that i went back and read through the comics again and i was interested to hear what other people thought about them and that's how i found your podcast needless to say after going through both main and all of the comic series i realized how horribly season 10 was handled uh, on 
its predict predictability of the overarching plot, as well as how unfulfilling the cross final this uh, destination was, as opposed to what could have been. But uh, <coughs> so okay, so you got a few good um, points there. I, I totally agree with all of them, and here's the thing. Um, personally, for me, this is one of those things where. I've been watching, I've been reviewing, I've been reading, and I've been so in tune with the series that, um, how do I put this, that uh, disappointments that you're, you're uh, feeling, how you kind of didn't like how it ended up was kind of to be expected. Like, one of the few things that uh, MLP Friendship is Magic as a series have it's one of its negative points is that the ending is always rushed no matter in what form it comes in um, be it movie series specials comics and so on the ending always feels rushed and I've kind of learned to deal with it like it's one of those things where it's not a MLP series if the show was not rushed to the end. Yes, so that's me after watching it for over ten years now. So I've gotten used to that. Um, and I remember one thing my one of my previous co-hosts told me, and this kind of stuck stuck with me, is that never or don't put your opinion onto the show or onto the product because that will influence how you uh, will see things or that will influence your um, opinion granted he didn't really follow his own uh, which I'm called this advice but I took it to heart I took it to heart because what he said was true because if I wanted things my way if I wanted the show to be how I wanted it to be, in all honesty, it would never be how I wanted it to be. In all honesty, I would love a series where Sunset comes back to Equestria, meets up with Princess Celestia, they hang out, they have a conversation about how things went, and maybe Celestia learns more about Sunset and how she changed and whatnot. And, you know, one of those slice of life adventure, sorry, not, not even adventure, one of those slice of life episodes where they just hang out and just get to know each other for the first time in a long time. So, <clears throat> uh, but in all honesty, we didn't have that and so on. And I've, how do I put this? I personally have learned to accept that, okay, what I want can never be achieved. So I will go to alternate routes to quote unquote get what I want. Fan fiction, art, comics, fan made comics, by the way, uh, are out there. So yay for me. Give a second. <clears throat> so <coughs> uh, I'm going to carry on, but for these few parts, I'm not going to read all of it because this is more onto his reviews. So what I would like you guys at home to do is go out there and uh, click on the links and read it for yourself because he really put in the effort and I hope you guys can do the same. Oh, no, wrong camera. Okay, <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. The story, start off, <laughs> the story starts off promising, trying to uh, pike our interest in exploring new lands beyond Equestria. So I got immediately dragged in, leading up to Zakura's initial uh, declining the not as much as request, but rather a conscription for the mission. And honestly, Zakura had every right to be angry that they just decided things for her instead of consulting her. That being said, however, things immediately go overboard when he decides to bring Applejack's dead mother into the conversation and in hindsight it's a downright low blow from 
her considering where her issue of for refusing to go home in the first place stems from okay I'm just gonna stop there so I am going to roll through stuff and see a few things let's see <coughs> okay uh, all right then this this seems like a good one mm, where is it give me a second while I try to process things <coughs> sorry <coughs> All right, okay, here. Then we move on to the monster attack, and we finally get to see Sakura shine at what she does best, leading to the introduction of Prince Abrax, one of the four kings. At this point, Equestria's peril become too obvious to ignore, as Silver pointed out. And we move on to the third issue, the adventure in the desert of course we see more mean six parallels with the traits that Sakura's friend exhibit which on its own isn't bad and then we get to the the devil part yeah <coughs> uh. so skip 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 uh, right here and then we get a lead into the song. Funny thing about this one, after going through the whole arc again, I talked to Andy Price on DeviantArt about it, venting about some frustrations with the writing, although way back then I didn't go nearly in detail as I am now, and he said he too had some problems with the arc altogether, but alas, he didn't really have any influence on the story since he was just an artist for it. So when he made the cover for the issue, one can easily get the gist that Andy's venting frustration with what Jeremy did by adding some you can only hear into a pretty visual setting, hence Tempest holding the sign warning there's music in this comic. And he gives us a link which I seen and I sh recommend you guys go clicking on it because it goes to um, uh, the enterprise different way he comments and whatnot <coughs> so moving on a bit let's see okay uh, lastly I have to focus on Sakura which I fear Jeremy butchered in one uh, sorry in order to fit her into a box and you can thank Silver Quill for making all those character archetype videos. Zakura is a shaman. I mean this uh, that goes as far back as the original uh, concept where that was literally her name but that had to change uh, but they had to change it ignoring the fact that certain um, uh, articles that Zakura wears sorry um, Zakura were, mm, wears or items inside her house are taken from various African tribes and is therefore an amalgamation of all the definition of a shaman archetype goes the following the shaman archetype is one of a person who has undergone a physical or mental the more frequent rebirth process in some way giving them a sensitivity to both the er <laughs> et ethereal or spiritual realm the rebirth experience and the spiritual energy which they con mm, consequentially embody allows them to present a healing and soothing presence to those around them all right all right I'm going to skip, 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 because if I read this whole thing, then there's no point reading the article on your own. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay, let's see. Where, 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 where? Okay, now that we put the review behind, I must apologize for being so it can relate that you couldn't feature this in your video, and it's for good reason. All right. Uh, yes, this is also one of the compromise that, or one of the plans that we tried to do, where I kind of slid this into the video, but it seems that it was a bit too late. It's okay. It's okay. We we can work with it. We can work with it. Anyway. See, after some time, my frustration with season 10 comic had reached the boiling point and there was this thought going in my head. I can write a better story than Jeremy, which flashes, uh, flashes out Sakura and we get to explore the world. So I decided to do it. Since March, I've been writing a long story involving part of world building that Jeremy Ridley himself set up as far back as Legends of Magic but never used them while making sure that the story retains the tone of the series. I suppose you could call it season 10. In any case, I've been putting out chapters on a weekly basis and since it takes most of my time on plot design, I didn't get to take time to put the review together early so if you're interested go to film fiction and look up Turi, Tur Turmoil, Turmoil, uh, Turmoil Rises and if you like it if you like it feel free to uh, recommend it to people film fic in the link in the in the text document uh, thanks for listening and thank you GFT I really appreciate it and yeah <coughs> with your concerns with season 10 um, honestly for me I haven't read anything past what I've reviewed so I am kind of at loss because uh, from what Silver told me that the show or the comic followed season one to a T and that could be a problem on its own but for me I didn't really notice it so um, I, I guess I was immune to that effect but I get what you I, I get what most of you guys are feeling because it feels like they were rehashing the same ideas and didn't really put in effort I, it, it feels that way I don't think so but it feels that way because one of the few things that I like to use if I were to be an apologist and whatnot or if I were to just um, place devil advocate and also try to understand uh, what they had to go through is that they have grandeur uh, they have grand ideas they had things that they wanted to do but couldn't because Hasbro mandate they couldn't uh, uh, Hasbro stops them from doing this Hasbro stops them from doing that all the amazing ideas that they have and Hasbro says no and in all honesty it's one of those things where it sucks it really sucks but in this scenario here did Hasbro did that or did um, or did Jeremy <coughs> sorry <coughs> did Jeremy had limitations put onto him by Hasbro or was his writing not that great to begin with and in all honesty, I got no idea. And from what I've read, most of his works are okay. Um, but me not being a writer, I don't really notice all these kind of things. So, if you guys want to hear what I think, my thoughts are <coughs> sorry, my thoughts are already on uh, tape in the uh, review for season ten, one to four. So go check them out over there. And if you want to read through what GFT has to say, um, his video or sorry, uh, his write up here, I'll be posting it in the link below for you to check it out. So anyway, um, let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. So anyway, <coughs> well, I, I forgot to open my script and you're wondering, oh, you've been doing this for almost how many years now and you still don't remember your own thing? <laughs> yeah, I have a memory of a goldfish. Sorry. Oh my goodness. 
And it's really annoying on my part because I should remember all this. Like, it's not that hard to remember names and stuff. I, I say it on a weekly basis. I should remember them, shouldn't I? <sighs> yeah, but we are all human, so we, we have flaws. <coughs> Sorry. Anyway. Um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitch Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on funnylive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya!